What's going on guys? Welcome back to part two of the how to walk on to a college football team mini series. So today we're going to go over all the details that you need to know to give you the best chance of making the team during your walk on trial. So the first tip that you need to know leading up to your walk on trial is obviously in order to be eligible for the trial, you have to already be enrolled there at the school taking at least 12 credits. So with 12 credit hours, you're considered full time by the NCAA. If you're not taking 12 credits and you're only doing part-time, you cannot try out or play any athletics at a NCAA collegiate team. So most college teams, if not all college teams, require you to have at least a 3.0 in order to try out. So they usually do this because they like to hold the walk-ons to a higher academic standard so that they can bring up the team GPA. So just know that your grade requirements throughout the time of being a walk-on and even if you do eventually get a scholarship is going to be a higher standard than if you were just a regular uh, player on scholarship so obviously with the freshman it differs if you're a freshman coming straight out of high school then for the most part you just need to make sure that you meet the NCAA eligibility center requirements and obviously graduate high school and get into the school that you're planning on walking on to so going into the next tip tip number two the NCA eligibility center is a major major key in all of this if you're not signed up with the NCAA eligibility center congratulations you played yourself you're not walking on you're not playing at any division one two or three team in the NCAA so what you need to do is make sure that you're signed up through the NCAA eligibility center if for some reason you didn't already do it usually they kind of get people to do it early sophomore year freshman year um junior year definitely but if you for whatever reason have not got that squared away you need to get that squared away because that's going to be the the determining factor of let's say you do eventually make the team but you're not eligible they're not going to take you're going to just be wasting another roster spot and they don't need that. They, that's a roster spot that can go to somebody else. So you want to make sure that you're eligible. So when you're talking about the eligibility aspect of it for Division One and Two schools, those are kind of grouped together by the NCAA, meaning that you have to meet the NCAA's requirements and not just the schools. So for like, I think Division One is like 2.5 and a certain uh, SAT, ACT score in order to be eligible to play at a, a division one or division two school and those vary based off of whether you're going to division one or division two along with actually getting into the school itself so with division three schools you still have to go through the ncaa eligibility center but there's no extra requirements for you to meet it's just simply if you get into the school you're eligible to to walk on and try out so going back to division one division two requirements one of the biggest things uh, especially if you're transferring is the credits the amount of credits that you have working towards your degree because you have to have a certain amount of credits towards your degree to, in order to be eligible me actually right now because i sat out this past fall i have to take nine credit hours this summer and then 18 in the fall in order to make sure that i'm eligible you know for whatever chance if some of my credits don't fully transfer so you definitely want to know where you stand as far as the eligibility goes now with along with NCAA they'll tell you once you fill out all the information you fill out any previous schools you attended your transcripts high school transcripts test scores all of that they'll let you know whether you're a qualifier an early academic qualifier an academic red shirt or a non-qualifier so starting with the first one, um, being a qualifier, just it literally just means that you're eligible to play. You know, you have all the credits or the requirements that you, you need to meet and that you can go through and actually be able to compete in the NCAA game. So early academic qualifier is the same thing, but this is more pertaining to the high school seniors. So with the early academic qualifier, this is more so for scholarship guys but i'll throw it in there so with the early academic qualifier it actually allows you to leave high school a semester early which you'll be there for the spring semester at whatever college it is that you're going to be attending so academic red shirt so with the academic red shirt is you can actually be on the team but you can't actually play the last the easiest one to remember um non-qualifier if you're a non-qualifier that means you don't meet the requirements by the NCAA um, so for that year or however long until you actually meet those requirements 
you will not be eligible to play in any uh, games. So for all that information, I just kind of brushed over it, skimmed over it real quick. But I'm going to drop the link to the actual NCAA's Eligibility Center website. It's going to be down below. And you can go over all that information and really look into it. And you really want to figure out where you are. Because knowing your eligibility, knowing your status, knowing what you need to do is going to be extremely important. Because the last thing you want to do is get to the tryout, make the team, or pass the tryout, and then not be eligible so let's say you actually make the team during a walk-on tryout what they would do with this is they're going to go back to the ncaa eligibility center to one obviously see if you're registered if you're eligible to play because they're not going to break any rules for you they don't want any smoke with the ncaa i said do we have a pillow huh? oh you s u s r None of these schools do, nobody does. The NCAA does not play. Make sure you know whether or not you're eligible leading up. It just, it it helps with a lot of things. You really don't wanna get your hopes up and then not be eligible or go somewhere thinking that you could do this and not being able to do that. It's, it really just saves a headache if you know your eligibility status before you attempt to walk on. So now you got all of that out the way, you got all the technical side of it, you got the transcripts in, you're squared away, you are considered a qualifier by the NCAA, and now it's go time, right? Okay, so what do you need to be doing leading up to the actual tryout as far as workouts go? So going into this walk-on trial, you need to look at this as the biggest job interview that you've ever had, okay? You need to go into this thing in the best shape of your life, the strongest you've been, the fastest you've been. So now you're looking at actually going into the walk-on trial. What do you need to know about the trial? How do you be prepared for it? So the best thing, obviously, that you can do is make sure you have a consistent workout. Now within that workout, you wanna make sure that you're hitting, obviously, your strength and conditioning. That, that, that's gonna be the biggest thing that you need to do. Your actual walk-on trial for the skill positions, and the kickers or specialists isn't going to be so much weight room. With the, the skill positions and the specialists, they want to see how you move, how you move in space. They want to also see how the big skills move as well. But for the big skills, that strength aspect of it, you want to be able to hit at least 225 10 times. If you can't hit 225 10 times, it's, it's not a good look. It's not. Your skill position is out here hitting 225 10 times. So if you can't at least get 10 reps, it's, it's gonna put a damper on your walk-on trials. The next biggest thing you wanna focus on is conditioning. So with your conditioning, you wanna make sure that you are going for more speed endurance and endurance. So the actual trial itself varies depending on where you're at. For me specifically, it was more so movement-based a lot of fast pace, a lot of change of direction, seeing how we move in in space. In some other places, they go by the combine. So you might be doing L cone drills, the 20 yard shuttle, uh, the 40 yard dash, things of that nature, uh, depending on where you're at. There's some slight variation in how they actually run their walk on trials. But for the most part, you can cover all ground with the same thing. And that's gonna be obviously you want to work on the technical side of your 40s. You want to work on your 40 starts. You want to work on your agility and your change of direction. So those are going to be the to kind of the main three things that you can work on to cover all aspects. But your conditioning is key, especially if you're like how my group was. It was a smaller group, so everything was fast paced. There was almost no time really for a break. It was we were in and out in probably about 45 minutes. So. You want to make sure that your conditioning is up. You don't want to be the one throwing up, bending over, tired, about to pass out. You, you don't want to be that guy. Nobody wants to be that guy. It's going to be all about conditioning. Okay, it's going to be how do you react to high stress? How do you move? How do you move in space? How, do you, how well do you follow directions when you're tired? All of those little details are going to come into play. They're going to get you tired. They're going to get you going through a dynamic warm-up, something intense, something getting you sweating, you breathing heavy, and then they're going to get you going right into those drills. 
And when you're going into the drills, it's fast paced, non-stop. It's go to the drill, jog to the back of the line, go again. You're not, you're not ever going to really be walking or standing around. You want to be in the best shape of your life. I cannot stress that enough. So when you're lifting, you want to make sure that you're hitting your power lifts, your power movements, you know, your cleans, your bench press. You want to look built going into this. Okay, they, they do do kind of the look test um, where, you know, they'll look at you and, and kind of see like, okay, this guy looks athletic, you know, and you want to be able to catch their eye because once you catch their attention with the way you look physically, now it's time to show out in the drills and in the, the weight room if you are a big skill. What you need to know is what do the people at your position look like? So if you're going to try out for receiver, how tall are most of the receivers on the roster? How much do most of the receivers weigh on the roster? Same thing for linemen, same thing for specialists. Well, not so much for specialists. Kickers are kickers and punters are always in a weird spot. But especially for the big skill, little skill, and the linemen, you want to make sure that if most of the linebackers on their team are 230 and up, you don't want to go into that walk-on trial at 200 talking about you're a linebacker, okay? They don't want a, a project. They want somebody that can kind of come in and be a, a role player or, you know, help on scout team and things of that nature. You want to be as close to the weight of that uh, position group as you can leading into your walk-on tryout. So you've been conditioning. You're in the best shape of your life. You've been hitting the weights. You're close to what most of the people at that position group weigh. Um, so now it's the night before the walk-on tryout. What do you need to do? Obviously, you want to eat a great meal. For me personally, at the, the latest three days from the walk-on trial, maybe just a, go for a light run, something light. But those next two days, chill out. Don't do not do no more weights, no more running, none of that. Nothing to, to put stress on your body. You want to just relax, You know, maybe do some yoga, some stretching, because you want to feel great for your walk-on trial. Because remember, we're looking at this as an interview. You want to go in there like you just got the freshest haircut, clean shoes, nice suit. You want to go feeling your best, looking your best. Try to get eight hours of sleep. If you, you're you like me, you usually probably don't get eight hours of sleep. Once you make the team, you probably also won't get eight hours of sleep. But before this walk-on tryout, try to get eight hours of sleep if you can. If you can't, don't get any less than six hours. Six hours is pushing it. But eight hours of sleep is ideal. Whatever time the walk-on trial actually is, you want to make sure that you can get in eight hours of sleep from the time that you go to sleep to the time you wake up. Because you want to make sure that you wake up on the day of the trial at least two hours before the trial. Two hours allows you to get up, eat a light breakfast, get some water in you, stretch out, and fully wake up. Because if you're like me, when you first wake up, the first 30 to 45 minutes is you're still half sleep, you know? You want to be alert, you want to be wide awake, you want to be ready to go. So, during your walk-on tryout, when you're actually going through the tryout itself, be a leader. Even if it's not what you are or how you were in high school or whatever the case may be, step to the front of the line. Go first. You know, get the group together. If you see guys, you don't even have to know these people, okay? If you see people bending over, hey, come on, bro, get up. Let's go. Let's work. You, you have to be, coaches love that, okay? Those are people that they want on their team. So be that person. No matter how good or how great your conditioning was, you're going to get tired. You're going to get fatigued. It's just, it's bound to happen. You know, that's what everything is designed for. It's designed to get you tired. So you're going to get tired no matter how good your conditioning is. But the key aspect of it all, no matter how tired you get, you still want to go as hard as you can every rep. Take no reps off. So a real quick bonus tip of actually walking on. One of the other things that I, I almost forgot to mention is that you need to know how many players are at that position. Because if they have five quarterbacks on the roster and they have two freshman quarterbacks incoming, that might not be a school you want to walk on to. If, the, if you're really serious about sports and you're not just a regular student walking on, if you're you're trying to decide somewhere to go so you can walk on, don't go to a team that has six quarterbacks already. 
because you're going to be number seven. And that's a lot of time to be down. You're talking about people that's going to be seniors, some people that's going to be juniors, sophomores that will be juniors, freshmen that will be sophomores, people that already have a leg up on you. If you found this video helpful, if you like the video, if you like the content that I'm posting, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, leave a thumbs up on the video, and turn on the notification bell because you don't want to miss this next video where I'm going to be talking about what do you do once you actually walked on? What's the mindset that you need to be in? How do you carry yourself? How do you go about being a walk-on athlete? Thank you for kicking it with your boy. I'm out of here. Stay safe. Stay blessed.